Hey everybody, this is Andre here with the Kevin Breeze channel, and this is pros and cons for the AT&T Radiant Max. Today, I'm going to be going over the best and the worst things about this phone. Let's get started. So the first pro for this phone is the camera. This phone, for what it is, actually has a pretty decent camera with features that I really like. So up front here, we got the water drop notch for the front facing camera, which I'm not a big fan of the water drop notch, but the camera itself is really good. It's eight megapixels. And for what it is, the pictures are actually pretty decent. On the back here, we have a triple camera setup and it's actually all really useful stuff. This phone has a 13 megapixel rear camera, a five megapixel ultra wide camera and a two megapixel macro camera. It doesn't have one of those depth sensing cameras that I personally feel like are kind of pointless because this phone still has portrait mode regardless. Every time I see a depth sensing camera in one of these triple camera setups, it's a little bit of a disappointment because I know it's going to be missing something, usually the ultra wide camera, because for whatever reason, for a lot of these lower end phones, manufacturers like to leave out the ultra wide camera for whatever reason and just have a macro camera and a depth sensing camera. And that's never good for me. But luckily, this phone has pretty much all the camera features you could ask for. And this is the type of picture that this phone can take with its rear camera. I think this is really impressive for what it is. This is a phone that you can get for less than $120 at Walmart. And it's taking really good quality pictures. Now, of course, the brightness, exposure, all that isn't handled the best. It's a little bit dim. The colors are really good, though even though they're not really bright or anything special, but the quality of the image is really sharp and the details are satisfactory, especially for its level. Now, don't expect Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra or iPhone type of photos. This is still very much an entry-level phone. It's not gonna have a camera suited for professional photography. That being said, something for social media or sending pictures to family and friends or just enjoying pictures you take, this is gonna be really good. Another phone around a very similar price range to this, offered by the same carrier, the AT&T Maestro Plus, is around a really similar price range and the camera is not nearly this good. This phone's camera is so much better than that one and it just goes to show that for what it is, the camera on this phone is really impressive. Now my next con for this phone is the processor. This phone is getting three gigabytes of RAM with a MediaTek Helio P22 processor. We ran a Geekbench 5 benchmark test on this phone and it came back with a single core score of 149 and a multi-core score of 875. Now this isn't really bad in and of itself. In fact, it's a little bit better than a phone like say the Samsung Galaxy A02. It's in a similar price range. It's actually much better than that. But as far as AT&T prepaid goes, Again, the AT&T Maestro Plus is probably one of the closest counterparts to this phone. That phone is actually a bit cheaper than this one, and its single core score is in the 1280s, which is quite a bit higher than this one. And since this phone has a much better camera, a better looking display, and a few more features than that phone, it's a little bit of a disappointment that the processor isn't better, or at least the same too, because that was one of the really nice things about that phone, and since they're kind of similar in that way, I would think that this phone would have a slightly better processor. But again, this isn't a huge con because in this price range, you're most likely not going to be looking for a phone that has insanely high processing power. And with these scores, you're still going to be able to do most daily activities as well as some other ones like photo editing and maybe a little bit of games that aren't too complicated. Now my next pro for this phone is the large display. As you can clearly see from just this, this phone really does have a big display. And to get more specific, it has a six and a half inch LCD display with a resolution of 720p, a PPI of 264, and an aspect ratio of 19 and a half by nine. So it is pretty impressive. If you're doing something like content consumption or reading or browsing the web, pretty much anything that you would be doing on a phone, having a larger display is gonna make that stuff a lot easier and a lot more pleasant too. Now my next con for this phone is that it has no face unlock. Although it does have a fingerprint scanner right here on the back, face unlock is a real nice feature too, especially if you're trying to be more hands-free and unlock your phone that way. It really does help as an alternative because I don't wanna put in a pin or a password or anything like that 
if my fingerprint scanner for whatever reason isn't working or isn't convenient for me to use. I would much rather use face unlock. It's nice to have both of those features, but unfortunately this one just has one. But that does bring me to my next pro, that obviously this phone does have a fingerprint scanner. And we're gonna test out just how well it works. There we go, not bad, one more time. So it is pretty fast and responsive as well. Overall, it's a fingerprint scanner. They mostly work the same unless they don't work at all, like some of those in-display fingerprint scanners that I don't really care for. But this fingerprint scanner works well. And again, I really don't like having to put in a pin or a password to unlock my phone. So even though there's no face unlock, it still works out pretty well. My next con for the phone is that it has a 720p display. Now the display itself doesn't really look bad, and considering that it's a pretty low-end phone, it's not that unexpected that it only has 720p, but every time a phone can shoot videos in 1080p and only has a display of 720p, it's always such a letdown. Especially since this phone actually has a pretty decent camera, so those videos are not going to turn out completely bad, it's actually gonna be pretty decent. So it's pretty disappointing that you can't view those videos in 1080p as well. 1080p really isn't a very special resolution. It's pretty normal. So I really hope that in the future, 1080p becomes more of the standard resolution as opposed to 720p, just because it's so much better, but also not a whole lot different as far as the level of the phone because I have seen really low-end phones with 1080p displays. So that goes to show that it is possible. They're just, for whatever reason, not doing it. Now my next pro for this phone is the storage. Now this phone has 32 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card expansion. Now normally I would say that's a con because that's not that high, but considering the level of the phone, it's a really inexpensive phone you can get at Walmart for less than $120. And a lot of those phones, like the Samsung Galaxy A01 for example, that's in a very similar price range, only has 16 gigabytes of internal storage, which I think is almost unusable. I can't even imagine what it's like to use something with such a small storage. So 32 gigabytes in the context of this situation is pretty accessible and I can definitely appreciate at least that. Now my next con for this phone is that there's no dust or water resistance. Now this is pretty normal for a low-end phone. That's typically a high-end or flagship phone feature, but I still think that more phones should have dust and water resistance because being exposed to the environment is dangerous to your phone in a lot of situations. And just because you don't have the highest end phone, doesn't mean that you wouldn't want to take care of it. So I do think that that's a feature that should really be implemented on lower end phones as well. Now my final pro for this phone is the battery. This phone has a super decent battery. I wouldn't say it's the best because it's quite a ways off from that, but it's definitely not bad either. This phone has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. Now the biggest I've seen so far is 5,000. So there is a difference there, but a lot of these lower end phones like the AT&T Maestro Plus, for example, or the LG Phoenix 5, or the AT&T Fusion Z, all of those phones have really small batteries that are pretty unimpressive. The AT&T Maestro Plus, which is probably, again, one of the closest phones from AT&T prepaid to this phone, has a 3300 milliamp hour battery, which is super small, almost as small as an iPhone battery, which is just known to be really small. Whereas this one with a 4,000 milliamp hour battery is quite a bit better. So it's not only gonna get more life per charge, but also in the long run as the phone is starting to wear out, this battery is gonna last a little bit longer. Again, it's not the best. It's not like a 5,000 milliamp hour battery like the one the Blue G91 has, but at the same time, it's still a really good battery. Now my final con for the phone is its cheap looking design. This phone might have a big display that looks pretty nice and might feel like a decent quality as far as the materials go, but it's not pretty. Looking at it, it has this thick clunky looking bezel at the bottom and the top and the water drop notch that I mentioned earlier. And overall, this phone really looks like a cheap phone. You can just tell by looking at it it's not aesthetically good looking at all. And there are so many other phones out there, even in a similar price range, that look a lot better. But this is pros and cons for the AT&T Radiant Max. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and hopefully it gave you some insight 
that's useful in deciding whether or not this phone is right for you. Again, if you want to learn more about this device, be sure to watch the full review on the channel. And for more info about pricing and availability, definitely check the link in the description because that's always going to be changing. Again, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you found it helpful. I'll see you next time.